hi guys I'm just gonna put my so I'm gonna be doing a live stream today for Arts Etobicoke I'm gonna do a little studio tour then I'm gonna talk about some of my work so that should be fun I'm just gonna wait to see if anybody else joins um, I'm gonna put my photography account uh, down below and then I'm also gonna put um, I have a little business I'll talk about that later that I'm starting to do hi guys um, and I'm gonna put that down there too if you want to check that out just type this in just put that and pin it okay so hopefully everybody's doing well with covid hopefully everybody's staying safe obviously and also, if you're attending any of the protests this week, um, please be safe. Make sure you bring a mask. Make sure you bring everything that you need for that. Um, yeah, so please be safe if you're going to a protest. Um, I'm going to give a bit. I'm just going to put in my business account, too. I just started it. I'll talk about it later. Um, I'm just going to... There we go. Let me just pin that. And then I will start... Sorry, I normally don't do live streams, so I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, so let me give a bit of background on me. So I go to ESA. I'm in the musical theater program, but this year um, I did photography and I completely fell in love with it. Shout out to my photography teacher, Mr. Novak. Um, so yeah, and next year I'm going to be going to Ryerson um, for their School of Image Arts for Photography. So I'm super excited about that, and I'm super excited to kind of share some of my work with you today. Um, I'm mainly a photographer, so a portion of this will be me filming my computer and talking about my work, so I'm, I'm really sorry if that's like bad quality. I'm so sorry. If you go on my photography account um, below, I put it in the comments, I pinned it, but it's a, it's at Olivia Graham Photography. Um, I don't know. It pinned my business account. Okay, well, you know what? I'm going to do it again because I don't know if it uh, stayed. But I have a website. So if you want to see any of my photos in, like, good quality, you can check that out after. So... I think one of like the best things about quarantine that I have to say is since I'm a photographer, I can't be like going out. Um, obviously, I can't be going out and uh, taking pictures with like models and stuff or like my friends. So you kind of have to get creative. And I've been doing a bunch of different stuff, like experimenting with different um, arts. Uh, I've been doing some like drawing, some illustration some fashion design I'll show that all to you later um I think I'm just gonna start the studio tour it's my room um I'm in grade 12 so obviously I don't have funds to have my own studio or like the means to get my own studio so it's it's gonna be a tour of my room also I haven't updated my room since I was in like grade 2 so there's some you know some questionable things in here um, like this Chef Kitty poster. We're just gonna pretend that we didn't see that. Uh, I'm gonna turn the light on, and then I'll give you a little tour of my, my workspace. So, this is where the magic happens, my MacBook. Um, I edit all my photos on there, I do all my digital illustration on there. That is pretty much where, like, everything happens. I don't need a huge studio space being a photographer because I take all my stuff and then I bring it back here and I just edit it all on like my computer so that's lucky. I have this super old sewing machine. It still works but like it needs help sometimes. It's very frustrating because it won't sew sometimes and you just have to like sit there waiting it for it to work again but it has um, been helpful this year um, with me sewing things for the fashion show which sadly didn't happen. I'll talk about that in like a couple minutes. I've been doing like trying to work on shading and um, illustration. So I did this photo 
actually one of the people that went to my school. Did some shading, some drawing. <laughs> yeah, it looks like your machine. Yeah. I, I hope to get a new one, but I mean, they are expensive. If anyone knows, like, how to fix your sewing machine that, that, like, the thread will just come out sometimes and then it will just stop sewing, so if any, maybe I'm doing something wrong, to be honest. Um, yeah, so I've been working on these, also working on, like, just doing different, like, body shapes and getting, like, body proportions, because I've been trying, like, a lot to, um work on my drawing abilities. I've never really been someone who can, I don't consider myself someone who can draw. So, you know, it's been a good time to work on that, to be honest. Okay, so, um, we were supposed to have this fashion show at school, uh, Etobicoke Fashion Show. It had so many, like, super, super amazing designers that were, uh, gonna be in it. And the people had put so much hard work into getting it ready, and sadly, because of COVID, it got canceled, so that's like a real bummer. I'm really sad about that. But I had been doing some fashion designs for that, so I thought I'd show you. This was my first ever attempt at sewing stuff, so if you're like a professional snow sewer or something, and you look at this and you're like cringing, I'm sorry, but it was my first attempt um, trying to make like clothing of any kind. I also, all my clothing is sustainable because I didn't want to be buying like new fabrics to be making any of this stuff so um it's all made from like pre-existing materials i didn't uh have to buy anything to make this stuff so i think that's super cool so i'll show you sorry there's a lot there's a whole loose thread situation going on here because i didn't actually finish these pieces but so i just made this top little bikini top this is made out of like um old bandanas and then on the back it's actually an old swimsuit top because I don't know how to draft patterns I feel like that is a more experienced air, um, section of fashion design so I wasn't there yet so I just used an old like bikini to make like the outline and then I just used these bandanas and then to go with that outfit I just had, thanks to everyone who's joining too, I was like genuinely worried that no one was going to join this, so I'm really happy people actually joined. Um, over here, I made these shorts, sorry, it's kind of hard to like hold these and have the camera at the same time. I made these shorts, so one half I made with the red bandana, one half with the blue, once again, all recycled bandanas that I had in my house or I got at the thrift store. Uh, to make these items. I think right now, to be honest, there's either like high end, also, I'm sorry, it's raining really hard outside, so if you hear like a noise in the background, that's the rain. I think right now, it's, there's either like super high end designers, um, who a lot of them are starting to like incorporate sustainability into their practice and into their clothing, so I think that's really great, but for people who are like, um, middle income or lower income, they they can't access that clothing. So that's when kind of fast fashion comes into play and people start purchasing from fast fashion stores. So I think it's really important that like young and up and coming designers start to like um, use sustainable practices in their clothing so that hopefully in the future we can have clothes that like middle and lower income people can afford that's still sustainable and good for the environment. That person's not gonna be me because I don't think I'll be doing more fashion design after this. Maybe it's kind of fun. It can be super frustrating too, but okay. And then I'll show you another piece that I made. So this one, we just have this top. Sorry, the edges are not finished. Sorry about that. Um, if you're looking at this and it's making you sad because you're a professional <laughs> at this, <laughs> I didn't finish this piece. And then it also has shorts. So the shorts and the top, um, those are both made out of a tablecloth that I got at Value Village. So, and then it has this like, oh wow, the shorts just fell. Um, it has this skirt that goes over the shorts and is attached to the top. And I made that out of an old curtain that I found at Value Village. If you go to the Value Village, um, like fabric curtain section there's some really cool prints that you can find there 
and, um, yeah, you can make, like, super cool stuff. Like, some of, uh, I, I saw, like, cartons there a while ago that was, like, a super trendy print that I'd seen them selling online. So, like, if you're ever looking for fabrics, that can be, like, a super good place if you want it to be sustainable. Okay, so moving on to another project that I've been working on right now. Um, I've been making fruit berets. I'll show you those in a second if you're kind of confused as to what a fruit beret is. Um, so these are hand sewn berets. They resemble fruits. I have uh, five types. I'm still working on them right now. I'll just show those. Um, I know. So we have a raspberry one. Um, obviously I haven't finished sewing, but I'm sewing these all by hand. So, um, this is going to be a blueberry when I finish this one going to be an orange. Um, we have a strawberry up here. There's going to be like these white things all around. And then we have a lemon. I like the lemon. The lemon's really, really cute. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be starting up this company. It's random, but I honestly think they're super, they're like super cute. Um, my Instagram for these is Botanical Berets. I'm going to be starting an Etsy shop, and there's going to be a link, um, on the Botanical Berets Instagram, and these are going to be selling for, like, $25. Obviously, they're all hand-sewn. They're not all going to look the same because I'm sewing them by hand, so they're not, like, cookie cutter. They're not coming out of a factory, so, Yeah. And they do take, like, quite an amount of work because I have to, um, you know, be sewing them all by hand by myself on the floor of my room. But, honestly, I think they're cute, so I thought it'd be a good idea. Okay, so I think now, actually, I'm going to turn my light off because if I'm showing things on my computer, I want it to be easier to see. Um, Arts Etobico sent me some questions. Ooh, sorry, I'm knocking things down. So I thought I'd answer a couple of those questions. And then I'm probably going to, um, I'm going to go through some of my work. Um, and then I'll answer some more questions. So I feel like I just rushed through that whole section because I was kind of nervous. But <laughs> hopefully this isn't like, hopefully everyone is still like good to go doesn't get bored by me talking about my photography and, like, is still engaged with this. Okay, so the first question that Arts Etobicoke sent me is, how long have you been affiliated with Arts Etobicoke? Only a couple months. Um, yeah, they are a lot of work. The berets, they take, a, they take a long time. But, I mean, they're fun to do, so I'm sure... It'll be great once I finish all of them. Um, so how long have I been affiliated with Arts Etobicoke? Like a couple months. Um, I was at school and my art teacher, Mr. Novak, again, shout out Mr. Novak. He made us all submit to um, the Shifting Environ show. And one of my pieces got in, so I was super, super excited about that. Yeah, the, thank you for saying they're super cute. I'm happy somebody likes them. And, um... Yeah, so I got into the show, so I was super excited. Right after that, um, coronavirus hit, so it was an online show, which is too bad because it's always cool to like see your stuff hanging in a gallery. But you know what? It was still like I'm. I hope it brought joy to people online, like seeing the show online, because I thought it was still cool, super cool. They did a super great job at like making that whole like digital gallery thing. And yeah, I hope to be affiliated with Arts Etobicoke more, because honestly, they have a super cute gallery. Everybody there is really, really nice. So yeah, I'm super excited to do more with them, because thank you, Mia, for getting... Yeah, you know, they'll be up soon, and then you can get your lemon beret. <laughs> okay, what is something people don't know about you? So up until grade 10, I wanted to start a pig sanctuary, that was my life dream, like, to start a pig sanctuary. I love pigs. Oh, you know what? I actually, so I have this mat in my room. I do some, like, digital illustration, and I designed this mat, and it's a pig, because I love pigs. So cute. Um, I also, yeah, I also do, like, 
forgot to talk about that. I also do, like, custom illustrations. I was selling, um, some, like, bags, um, with illustrations. I did this one for my mom for her birthday. It's kind of hard to see because she's worn it a lot. <laughs> it's my dog. <laughs> she loves my dog. So I did this little illustrate. Sorry, this is, like, literally impossible to see. I am so sorry. That's my dog. Super cute. I do those for, like, 30 bucks if you want one. Also, the info is on my photography account. Back to these questions. Oh, yeah, so something people didn't know about you. Pig Sanctuary. Now my dream job would be, like, full-time travel. I don't think that's really a job. <laughs> but, um, you know what? Like, if you start, like, a YouTube channel or I have a little business, that could be a possibility. So I'm working towards that. And hopefully at some point that happens. Okay. What do you do with your spare time when you're not creating art? Honestly, I like to, um... Is that a 30 bucks, like, that's super expensive? Or a 30 bucks, like, that's, I don't know, I'm kind of scared. Um, oh, you're a traveler? Let me know, like, how you did that. Because I'd actually be super curious to know. Because that's, like, my dream of what I want to do. Let me know in the comments. Okay, um, what do you do with your spare time when you're not creating art? I like to hike. That might sound sad to some people. Um... I feel like the, like, the novelty of hiking has kind of worn off since coronavirus started. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna speak about the work that was in the Arts Etobicoke show in a second. Um, spare time when you're not creating art. Yeah, I like to hike. And, yeah, I really have nothing else to say about that. Let's start looking at some photography. Actually, before I do that, I just want to show you guys this. So, since there hasn't been much to do, I've been drawing my friends in, like, different scenarios and stuff. I just started drawing them as, um, Hike Alberta. I actually, I wanted to go to Alberta this summer. I don't know if it's going to be possible with COVID, though, but I wanted to hike a mountain. I really did. Um, I've been drawing my friends as brat dolls. It's super fun because... I think they like it, so that's exciting. And also, it's super fun for me to make. I also... I made these ones. These are kind of like a more realistic um, one of all of them. But now, let me stop discussing that and let's get to some photos. So, I was going to do it like in chronological order of when I took it, but I don't know if I'm going to do that anymore. You know what, but I'll start with these. These are the first photos I've ever, I have ever took. Like, I got my camera, and I took these photos right at... Yeah, it is you, Jessica. Um, I took these photos right after I got my camera. I was lucky enough last year to go to Iceland, and if you ever talk to a photographer who has gone to Iceland, they just say it's, like, impossible to take a bad photo, and I think that's true. Um, but once again, I just got my camera. I was still, like... Um, experimenting with different, um, the different, like, controls on my camera. So, probably not the best technical work I've done. I think I'm still working on it. Like, I've only been doing it for a year. But, so I took this photo. Oh, no, I'm not going to twist it. Sorry, it's kind of hard to, like, see because I'm filming my laptop. But I took this one in Iceland. It's one of the, the most famous uh, waterfalls in Iceland. And this was taken at 12 a.m., because the sun sets in um, Iceland at 12 a.m. So, this photo. I, I, I still like this photo. If any of you are Game of Thrones fans, I'm not. But apparently this is the mountain in Game of Thrones. So, like, I don't know what it's called. But apparently there was some big battle in that show. And that's the mountain that they filmed it at. If anyone knows Game of Thrones, let me know in the comments. Um, oh, here's a nice horse that I met. These are such random photos. These are, like, the first photos I took. I named this horse Horsey Momo. Um, I think it was kind of scared of me. I'd come up to pet him, and he'd leave. But I got this photo of him. He's cute. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I do not like this photo. Just something is, like, off with it. Also, 
there's a boat in the background so I think we're just gonna move on from that and then there's this one I love this photo um Iceland has a road that goes all the way around it um but this was taken like inland so you have to drive on some like dirt roads and then you have to um yeah go through like rivers and stuff um the weather in Iceland was supposed to be like 15 to 16 degrees that was a lie it got to like below zero so if you're going to Iceland it gets really cold and we weren't prepared I'm pretty sure like every member of my family cried during that two nights of camping, but I got this great photo. So it was completely worth it. Um, okay. So here, this is like the first conceptual series that I did. Um, one of these photos was in Arts Etobicoke. I actually, I think I interpret these photos, like, different ways. I've actually interpreted them in different ways. I'll tell you, like, what I think they're about, but, or what I meant them to be about first, and then, yeah. So, here we have, so this is the series that I did. It involves taking a lot of random stuff to random places over Toronto. I'll just flip through them. And then, sorry, this is, like, not good quality. And then I will talk about them. Alright, so these photos were kind of about, um, a lot of the time I feel like I'm playing a character and I can never be my, like, genuine self. Like, I think I have a character with my friends. I think I have a character with my family, with my relatives, like... I never actually feel like I'm the most genuine person that I could be, and the character that I play kind of shifts depending on who I'm with. Um, This specific series was kind of about the character that I play or the personality that I put on when I'm with my family, which I feel is my most genuine personality. Um, I kind of feel like I have a box of safety and security that... um, surrounds me when I'm with them so that I can express myself in different ways um so all these photos there's the colored box and then within the colored box I obviously have like different things uh from my house I remember uh once I was at like um uh what's it called a portfolio review for university and the person was like who was doing the portfolio review was like would you be offended if people didn't understand what your work was about? And I was like, no, obviously I wouldn't be offended because I don't think when you're looking at someone else's work, I don't think you can ever know what they meant it to be about. You can interpret it in your own way. Um, even I've interpreted this work in its own way because some I look at it sometimes and I'm like, oh, this could also completely be about climate change like if you're looking at the box people are so oblivious and they're so comfortable and as long as um they're not being affected by climate change and by their out um outdoor surroundings it doesn't affect them and they just continue with their life so i think this series is also can also um really relate to that and i think like other people can interpret it how they want. I think even depending, sometimes I can interpret my own work in different ways. Normally, I'll take, I'll have an idea, I'll take the photo, and then like a week after, I'll be like, that's what the photo's about. That's what it is. And then I'll know what it's about. Okay, so move- because I talked a long time about that. All right, so now we have this series. So, this series, this was kind of experimentation. Like, um, I was trying to um, experiment with different um, colors, styling, clothing, um, taking a photo with all of those elements just being kind of like wrapped into one. Um, I'm sorry, for some reason, when I film my screen for this series, it appears like more blue than it actually is. So I apologize for that. This is my sister. I use her for a lot of my photos because 
it's really hard to, like, my friends are all so busy. It's hard to get, like, people who can model for me, and she's always around, which is great. She also looks gorgeous, so it's a win-win situation. Um, yeah, so I took these photos, um, we up at my grandparents' cottage. The lake was completely frozen over. It was, like, blue. It was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I can see. It's, it's kind of, it looks very blue, um, through the screen. So I do apologize for that. But yeah, this series doesn't have, like, a deep conceptual meaning to it. I think that's okay. I think you can take photos because they're beautiful. I don't think you necessarily have to have, like, a conceptual idea for every single photo you take. Um, yeah, so I did these. I was also working with, like, different posing and, um, yeah. So there's that. Let's move on. This is fun. I'm actually having a good time doing this. Ah, okay. So... I did this series with my friends, and I, like, finished it, I posted it to my Instagram, I posted it to my website, and then while I've been sitting in quarantine, I was looking at them, and I was like, I really hate that editing, so I'm gonna redo it. So, this is what the, like, original one looked like that I did. Sorry, it is so bright, I really apologize for this, um... <laughs> These were, like, the original photos that I took. And I've just kind of been in uh, Photoshop, just messing around with these um, during the pandemic. And, you know, let's just get rid of that. Go open Photoshop. Yeah, so I have been changing them. They're now black and white. Um, I'm sorry, because they're so, like clear you can kind of see the lines where I did like kind of like a gradient situation so I'm sorry for that but I've been changing these I've been doing them in black and white and then they have like I've been doing the jewels in color they take a lot longer to edit but I I like these photos a lot more like this um initially I don't think these photos really like met the mark of what I wanted um to come through when you're viewing them it was more of kind of a social experiment for me. Um, I've been seeing, like, especially with people my age, this kind of, like, wave of insecurity and self-doubt that I see in, like, myself and all my friends. So, for this series, I, I got some of my best friends, and I asked them to put jewels where they felt the most insecure. And then I think I was just trying to prove the point um, while taking these photos that... Um, the part that you don't like about yourself, no one else is noticing it. I know it might sound cliche, but, like, I think people still need to hear it. Um, it's just another beautiful part of you, and people aren't zooming in on all of those things that you feel insecure about. It doesn't matter to people. Like, you look great, and that's fine. Okay. I don't, I don't think that really came through with these, but I still think they're, like, beautiful photos, and I think all my friends look gorgeous in them, so... I do like the actual photos for those. Okay, let's go back to this little folder I have. Oh, okay, so I also, um, I like to, like, experiment with mixing photography and mixing illustration together into one. So this is the first piece I did where I, uh, mixed the two. Here we have it. Um, so I have this piece and this piece. So these pieces were, um, they, I have a generalized anxiety disorder. So these pieces were about that and kind of my struggle with that. What I was trying to do with these photos was I was trying to take internal feelings and externalize them into kind of a drawing. So all the drawings that, the drawing here that you can see on the face, or the drawing uh, that I did on this one. Those come from like emotions or feelings that you have when you struggle with an anxiety disorder. And I kind of wanted to put them into pictures. So that hopefully um, people who don't struggle with that could understand what it's like to feel like this 
most of the time and like yeah most of your day most of your life you kind of have these feelings it's kind of about like the logical side of your brain and the anxious side of the brain um are normally battling each other to see which one will win on that particular day so that is what that series is about I also did um another one so I'm in musical theater at school not photography and so we did Fiddler on the Roof this year um and we had to do this like theater and context assignment to go along with the musical so um there's a huge like presence of arranged marriages that's a huge topic in Fiddler on the Roof if you haven't seen the musical So me and a friend, we worked on this project together. She actually had people in her family who had been in arranged marriages. And so she kind of asked them about their experience in an arranged marriage. And from those experiences that we got from different couples um, who had experienced that, we, I put together this photo series of kind of four different experiences from those people. So here's the first photo that I did. This one was kind of about uh, one of the couples. They had this experience of um, not knowing each other at the start and over time actually growing to love each other. So that was one experience we had. Um, This one's kind of about um, the societal pressure of an arranged marriage and also um, the pressure the family places on the uh, uh, younger adult adults that are going to be in the arranged marriage. Um, that was also an experience of someone that we had talked to a lot of the time. Families um, will benefit out of putting uh, one of their children in an arranged marriage, so there can be a lot of pressure from uh, the family to do this. Once again, I do not have first-hand experience, obviously, being in an arranged marriage, but this is just all, like, testimonials that we got from interviewing people who had had this experience. This one was kind of about, um, being your own person, uh, not being your own person anymore, and kind of being, um, tied to the other person, or, like, you come in a package, not having your own individuality anymore after the marriage. So that is that one. And then we have this last one. Um, this one is kind of about the darker side that can sometimes take place with domestic abuse or almost uh, being played uh, by a puppet by the other person. Sadly, one of the people we interviewed did have this experience um, within their marriage, so we felt it, we must like represent that uh, with the photos so that it says accurate and real as possible to what their experience was. Okay, so there's that one. And then once again, if you're just joining or you weren't here at the start, um, my photography account is pinned below. So feel free to go on there. I have a Wix website. Feel free to take a look at any of my photography if you want. And yeah, that will be um, a lot better quality than me showing you on my computer. So. Okay, I'm going to do one more series, and then I'm going to get to some photos that I actually took during quarantine. So this is the last series that I kind of did um, before coronavirus and before school ended. Um, If anyone watching this right now is in grade 12, I think you can relate to the fact that grade 12 is a year that is extremely stressful. Um, I think a lot of people's mental health is kind of put on the line with the pressure of university, the pressure of getting high enough marks to get into university. There's a, there's just a ton of, like, pressure that happens, um, in grade 12. So I think for, like, a good month or two, I would go to school, and by the time I came home, I would just have no energy. I was probably, like, a very angry person, from just putting, like, all my emotional and physical energy into school. So I kind of did, I did these photos to represent that. Sorry, once again, they're showing up very bright. Yes, so I did these. Yeah, I think that's an issue that needs to be 
addressed more because I think a lot of grade 12 students even grade 11 can really struggle with like that overwhelming uh feeling so hopefully that can start to be addressed more at school super important okay now we're gonna go into some quarantine photos I just I'm just gonna show you one a singular photo I took and a series that I also did in quarantine. So this is a photo. I took this of my grandma. She looks super cute in this photo. Um, also disclaimer, I was standing over 10 feet away. I have a telephoto lens, so I was just really zooming in from how far back I was standing. Um, she currently has stage four ovarian cancer, so Obviously, um, with a medical condition like that, getting coronavirus could possibly uh, be fatal, so she has to stay inside. And it, it can be very hard for her because she can't see us, and um, we can't see her. So I just took this photo. We went to drop off groceries. We put them in, like, a buggy, and then we pushed them over to her. Um, but yeah, that was... This photo. I think she looks great in it. I really love that photo. Um, and now the last series before I finish answering some more of Arts of Tobacco's questions. And then I think that will be it for the live stream. So, a while ago, me and a friend, we were talking about how we find that a lot of the time, um, women get objectified and for some reason, women's bodies get related to fruit I've always found that exceedingly weird like I'm I'm really not sure why that's a thing like if you were to look up body types it would come up with like you're an apple you're a pear you're a lemon like I found that super weird so I think I was thinking about that well I did this series um I'm gonna be doing a series later on on that because I actually find that a super interesting topic but yeah, for this one, it doesn't really have a real meaning. Um, I was kind of trying to set stuff up, uh, a little setup in my house. Um, to take these photos, I took a lampshade. I put parchment paper on the end of the lampshade, and then I put a headlight in. Yeah, I don't know. The fruit thing just always seemed, like, super weird to me, because I've never seen, like, men compared to fruits. I don't know. It just... It just seems weird, you know? I don't know. Maybe other people don't feel like that, but I don't know. I was just talking about it with a friend, and we just thought it it seemed kind of weird. So, um, yeah, I put a headlight in a lampshade. I put parchment paper over it, and I made kind of a little lighting setup. And I took these photos of my sister. So, while making, I made a little, like, no, I already said that. I made a little set. So, yeah, I did these. I actually do really like these. Um, I was lucky to have these published um, in a magazine, so that was super exciting. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to show you today because I don't want to ramble on for like a super long time. Check out my photography account for more stuff. Check out my website. I'm going to answer a couple more of these questions from Arts Etobicoke, and then I think I'm going to wrap up. Okay, so... They asked me, what is your go-to meal you make for guests? Okay, after this live stream is over, everyone should look up cheesy garlic pull-apart bread. It is beautiful. So you take like a loaf of bread, you cut it horizontally, then you cut it vertically. You know what? I'm just going to show a photo. It's a beautiful food. Um, it looks like this. So good. So good. I 100% recommend you, like, take a blender, you throw some parsley in, you throw some, like, garlic in, you throw some olive oil in, then you, like, mix that with butter, put it on the bread, then you put cheese. It's a great experience. Make it tonight. Like, if you have the stuff to make it, I 100% recommend. Okay, what is the most meaningful art experience you have had? Um, I've only been doing this for one year, so... I think the most meaningful to me was just like the amazing experiences that I've had 
having my work in galleries and having my work in publications, that's just so exciting to me. Um, I was lucky to have it published in three magazines, Photo Ed, the digital edition, um, Mob Journal, and Picton Magazine, where I actually got one of my photos on the front cover, which is super exciting, as well as the Trinity Review, which is a literary arts journal, and obviously um, getting to do a show with Arts Etobicoke, so much fun, um, Albright Knox, and also... Um, Oh, what is that? Oh, I also did one at Artscape Young Place for, it was a uh, teens advocating for mental health. That was also an amazing show. So I've just, I've been so fortunate and I'm so happy to um, have gotten those opportunities in like my first year of doing visual arts. So that's super exciting. Okay, and the last question before I go, why do you think community arts are important? Oh, I think community arts are so important. Like, I'm fortunate enough to go to an art school where they put a huge emphasis on art, but at a normal school um, without an arts focus, it's normally, it would be like math, science, English, and then art is like down here, which I do not agree with at all. Um, I think art is so incredibly important for your mental health, for your well-being, for, um, you know, just just like making yourself healthy, having it as a hobby, having something that you really enjoy. And I think since um, the education system doesn't really put a great emphasis on art education, it's so, so important that we have community arts so that like kids can go and they can be exposed to these um, different artistic experiences and just fall in love with art and learn everything that they can about um, art. So yeah, I think community arts so extremely important. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me today for this live stream. Uh, if you want to check out my photography account, it's pinned. If you want to check out my business, it's Botanical Berets. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining in. And I hope you have a good rest of your day, a good rest of your week. Everyone hang in there with the coronavirus situation. If you're going to a protest, make sure you're safe. And yeah, everyone just have a great day. Thank you for listening to me.